Welcome back Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook back in the sports seat with your Wednesday Hump Day Sports Cast. Today history was made in the interior right off of Davis Road. The Fairbanks Youth Soccer Association and also local and state officials had the official groundbreaking ceremony for two turf fields. Talk of turf fields started about 10 years ago and finally they'll be in Fairbanks. The fields are a huge upgrade for the interior. It will help level the playing field for interior athletes whereas turf fields are pretty much the norm around the state. The cost is a little bit higher because of the interior's unique climate. The two fields are about $3.7 million and are estimated to open up next spring. They are being built to be NCAA regulation size, 120 yards long and 70 yards wide. There are future plans to erect bleachers, seating, and other support facilities for the fields. A high school soccer team could be the first to set foot on the new fields in 2015. The fields will be multi-purpose, so there will be soccer, football, other adult recreation sports, and possibly major sports events on the turf, like, say, a state tournament. The rental rates will even be the same. FYSA President Kip Harmon and others on hand see the fields as vital assets to the local sports community for years to come. It took a couple years to get the funding for the uh, turf fields out here, but uh, by the local people showing up with matching funds, it really helped be able to get that through the state legislature, and I'm glad to see that we're going to be having this. Probably in January and February, we're going to get the, the heads of, of soccer, football, parks and rec. Uh, we're all going to sit down and basically say, okay, bring your calendars. Um, we're going to set the schedule. And it's all about the kids and this type of... Uh, field setup that we're going to have is going to really benefit uh, uh, a lot of the kids and especially the high school age kids uh, as they prepare for their seasons and, and prepare for the future. Last night, the Alaska Gold Panthers had their first game of the 2014 season. They faced the Anchorage Bucks in Mulcahy Stadium. It was scoreless after five innings, but the Bucks' Garrett Copeland out of Austin, PA, would hit what would be the game-winning RBI in the bottom of the six if the Bucks win 1-0. Anchorage native Matt Gridley, playing for Western Oregon, went 2-3, scoring the game-winning run. The Bucks had four hits, and Alaska just had three. Three Anchorage pitchers combined for the shutout. Mike Benson led the four Panther pitchers with three Ks and a walk in three innings of work. The Gold Panthers played the Anchorage Glacier Pilots tonight in the second game of their summer season. Yesterday, we introduced you to Steve Petrucci and his incredible 14,000-mile run. I said 140,000 miles yesterday, so please forgive the typo. Thanks to Priscilla Nichols for pointing that out. But now, we'll see how he tries to get to South America. It's just a little bit more than putting one foot in front of the other. Steve Petrucci's 14,000 mile journey is in five legs. The first is from Dead Horse down through Canada and into the lower 48. The second goes down along the west coast, then to Mexico. The last two legs, Peru and Ecuador, then finally down to Ushea, Argentina. How can one get there? That's where Mike Fletcher comes in. He's a volunteer who helps Petrucci stay off the main roads. He scouts the route up ahead and helps with food and medical needs. They stay in touch via walkie talkies and have GPS and mobile internet resources to document and navigate their journey. Their van is equipped with beds and a microwave as well. Petrucci starts each day at 7.30 a.m., stretching, massaging, before and after running 8 to 10 hours, trying to finish at least 36 miles. He eats three to 4,000 calories a day. The trip is based on helping the Doctors Without Borders cause, but it's also about connecting with the communities they'll pass through along the way. We really would like to open it up to local charities, you know, as, as, we're, as we're going along, people that we meet, and the, the, that's what's important. Right. You know, Doctors Without Borders is, is incredibly awesome, but if we can help, a school that's in town or raise awareness for, for something that, that's local, people we meet, that's even better. One thing they'll remember about Alaska is their encounter with a bear on the Dalton Highway. Ran up on a bear one night eating dinner. That was that was interesting. We were going to camp there and pulled in and he's eating some kind of carcass. Figured he's having his dinner. We'll just go somewhere else to have ours. <laughs> The support group for Petrucci's run is very small, but they hope they can generate more volunteers and donors to help with their tremendous adventure that came through Alaska's interior. All right now, Petrucci and Fletcher, who are from Seattle, are just a few miles out of the Yukon Territory. If you want to follow along or donate to their quest, visit webcenter11.com, and there's a sports page there, and you'll find the link. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. For more KTBF Sports, just follow us on Twitter, watch on YouTube, stay in touch with our mobile app, and you can also visit webcenter11.com. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time.